All right, so we're going to lay out a wall using these, um, the wall layout sheets uh, should be provided. And, um, you know, just looking at this, you can see I've got A, B, C, and D walls. And each one of these obviously has some different dimensions going on because I've got a large window here, small window, door, window, and then two small windows here. Um, <clears throat> for uh, ease of simplicity on the windows and the doors, the number that is shown there is obviously like it's what's on a floor plan and that shows the actual size of the door or the window, not counting, you know, the sash and the frame and, and the, you know, the jam and things like that. So for this particular one, um, we're just gonna pretend, <laughs> uh, just for ease of, of laying something out that like for instance, the door is a 3068. So that's telling me three foot by six foot eight. The window is 2040 double hung. So we're saying it's two foot by four foot. So we'll pretend that that two foot is the actual rough opening size, knowing that when you lay out a wall, you lay out the rough opening size, not the actual size of the door window as it's shown here. So that's my little disclaimer. Um, but it's on the plan and it's just easier just as long as you explain that to whoever it is you're trying to show how do you do, do this. Uh, so what we're going to do, um, I'm just going to start by laying out wall A. And we are also going to say that wall A and wall C are the full walls. So they go all the way from one end to the other, the full 10 foot. So what that's telling me is that B and D now uh, are what I call a sandwich wall. They will actually be sandwiched in between these two walls. So we'll have to deduct some uh, measurements off this for the thickness of those plates. Okay, so for uh, letter A uh, or the A wall, we're gonna run that all the way from one end to the other. So it will be a true 10 foot, okay? Now, um, what I have in front of me here is a uh, two by six. Uh, I didn't get the two by fours out. Um, but I just got a two by six and it's a, it's a 10 foot two by six. Now what I did is I just used uh, whiteboard material and simply glued, put the whiteboard on there and clamped it and it's good to go. Now uh, the whiteboard comes in a four by eight sheet. Uh, you can buy it at most material supply stores. It's a four by eight sheet of like a, a eighth inch panel in if, it, if you will. It's actually used in kitchens and, and other areas like that for uh, a clean wall surface. We're using it for whiteboard. Okay, so it comes in eight foot. So I would rip the sheets down into whatever size two by material I'm using, glue, clamp it. And then on this one, you can see where I had to uh, put on a little, another two foot piece here um, to make it the full 10 foot. You just, you get more options when you actually have 10 foot lumber. You can use eight foot, uh, but for me personally, uh, I wanna be able to get more options with my layout. So I'm gonna do the, uh, the 10 foot. Okay, so on this drawing, um, what I'm gonna do is go through and just lay out studs first, um, just so we can have that. And I'm gonna use a red marker for that. And so um, I'm gonna pull from one side and keep that same flow going. So what we're looking at here is um, every 16 inches, I have a red mark on my tape measure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna either, you know, you can either set ahead or set behind. Uh, I always set ahead. So I'm gonna go up for, uh, see if I can squeeze over here. Um, for instance, on the 16 inch, I'm gonna come back three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna put a set of crow's foot right there and then I'm gonna put an X. And we do that simply because the thickness of the two by material is an inch and a half and so if I go to the 16 inches and I go half of an inch and a half, which is three quarters, I come back here to 15 and a quarter. If I go three quarters this way, I come up here to 16 and three quarters. So that's where my stud will be. I have to mark 
the edge of it because if I put the stud up there, the X or the middle of it now is disappeared. So I have to mark to either one side or the other of that stud so I know where to actually lay that stud, okay? So I just go through first and do the, uh, the three quarters, 47 and a quarter, put an X, 59, oops. <laughs> go to the red box, there we go. Put an X, so on, so forth, all the way down through here. Like so. All right, so now when we're at the end, we know this is a full wall. So this one will have a corner on either end of this, okay? And so we'll do that here in a little bit just to show you what that looks like too. Um, so in here, I'm gonna use my speed square and I'm just gonna come over here and mark through my crow's feet. So that's showing where the actual studs are. And so what I'm doing here is I am marking just a plate, okay? It could be a top plate, could be a bottom plate. Usually what I do is I do one board for each student, okay? And obviously explain that you would have normal, normal conditions, you would have a top and a bottom plate, marking both of them at the same time because you want the marks to be the same. But for, for this, um, for the lab part of it, uh, I just use one, they understand that there's two and um and so this just kind of goes through the process of, of you know going through the tape measure and and reading it and that kind of thing so um all right so now i have that marked and then the next thing i can do is i can come down here and mark my corners okay now i can put this on the very end this particular uh square has a little diamond right here so i can do that slide over there's one there's two and there's three. So if I'm doing a, like a traditional corner where I have three pieces of lumber, then it would be here. Now, um, if I am using a two by six, that's gonna change where, I'm using a two by six, but we're assuming a two by four wall. I hope that didn't confuse anything, but just pretend that's a two by four. There we go. <laughs> uh, so we just come over the, the three, you know, so you got inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half because you've got one end, uh, one end stud, you got another one here, and then this one usually is just kind of your blocks that you do a built up corner with. Now, if we were to come over here on this side, we could do a engineer or a California corner or energy efficient corner. Um, we sorta of can uh, do the same thing with this. I'm gonna come over here and um, depending on which side is the actual, uh, the front of it, uh, we will definitely have one on the end can't get away with that and then the other one would be coming this way okay so if i come down an inch and a half i'm just going to guesstimate just to show you and i come over so i'd have a stud here and a stud here this would receive the wall coming into it so i can get the insulation uh in the wall right here in the cavity in behind that so that's the engineered corner okay all right, so there's my layout of the studs, all right? So we have all that. And now the next thing we want to do um, is the windows, okay? So on this particular one, it's showing two foot nine to the center of that window, all right? So what we're gonna do is take our tape measure and I'm gonna go two foot nine and I'm gonna change colors for, make this easier. Two foot nine, I'm gonna put a mark and then I'm gonna do a CL for a center line, okay? Then from there, it is four foot six to the center of the other window. Set that there. Making sure my tape doesn't move. And I'm gonna go four foot six here. And that's the center line to that window, okay? So now what I can do is uh, look on my plan. And this is something earlier I was saying that you know, the, the window is a 2040, which means it's two foot wide by four foot tall, and, but that's just the size of the window, not counting the sash, the frame, the jams, all that stuff. But we're pretending that it's a two foot rough opening 
just for simplicity. Just, just communicate that and, and you'll be good. So if it's a two foot rough opening, that means it's gonna be one foot on either side of this window or of this uh, um, center line that we have here. So I'm gonna put it on the one foot mark. I'm gonna come over here, put a crow's foot, come over here to this two foot, put a crow's foot, because now you can see this is two foot wide, right? So then I can come over here and I'm going to put a mark on both of these lines. And then you've got the uh, king and the, um, the jack and the king, um, trimmer, king, however you want to call it. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just put that over there. Again, I'm going to that little arrow on my speed square. And then this one here. And you'll notice it falls right in the middle of that stud which is great, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're actually just gonna erase this stud now. So that stud does not have to be there, okay? So here, I'm gonna say, let's just call it a jack and a king, okay? Some people do X, O's, that kind of thing. It just, you know, just different things. But the key thing to remember is go, once you've got this line, you have to go out from it, okay? I've gotta go out from that crow's foot line. If I come in, my window won't fit because I got the framing in the way. Put another one here. Again, Jack and King. Um, like I said, some people do like uh, an X and an O. Um, you know, X for the stud, O for the Jack or whatever. So it just depends on your framing technique and how you want to do it. Um, but then I do the same thing, you know, and then this is my window. And sometimes I would actually write that in there. Um, if this is uh, inside the window, this no longer is an X, is it? It's going to be a C for cripple. Um, then, um, really depending on the width of the window, I might have another cripple here, like on this side, and I might have another one over here on this side, right? There may be some different options with that. Again, depending on maybe the width or the size of the window. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. Uh, that is just the first wall. Now, I didn't finish this window, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, and that is letter A. So then what I do is I go around, I would check everybody's work. If it was good, they can erase it, go on to the next wall, okay? So it makes it, uh, it, makes it pretty nice. Then, um, you know, you can do different variations. Uh, you will find some other um, worksheets attached. Um, you know, this one's just got uh, one opening on each side. You could actually just hand sketch a uh, partition coming off one of these walls so that they can practice doing a T or a T post. Um, so there's, there's a couple of different things that you can do or add to it. This is just what I have. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is erase everything here. And I wanna do real quick, just a nine foot wall, which is kind of that sandwich wall. Um, just to show you kind of what I was talking about. So best thing to do is come over here and pull this thing out to nine foot. Make a mark and that's your nine foot board. Okay. Um, then uh, usually what I do is because it's a nine foot board and the, um, you need to have the stud spacing. So if I, if I go back to this drawing here, I'm going to turn it so you can see. So now these 10 foot walls go all the way, right? From one end to the other, the nine foot is sandwiched in between these two end walls. So it's not really nine foot, okay? Um, we're gonna come off, if we're using two by fours, which I'm assuming in this example, we'll come off three and a half inches on both sides of that nine foot, okay? So I've got a nine foot uh, board laid out here, but now I wanna come in the three and a half inches, and then I will do the same on the other end because that's where the end of that wall is going to be, 
Okay, so I'm going to use this other color red to show the actual end of the board. And then same thing here. So this is that, this is three and a half inches on both ends. So now <clears throat> when I lay out my wall, I'm gonna bring my tape measure to here, I'm sorry, to the very end. And when I'm pulling, I'm gonna pull my 16 inches from the very end, not from here. Because if I go back and look on this, the nine foot line goes to end to end. That's including these two walls. That's why I did three and a half on each end. Well, when you're pulling your 16 on center, you still hook on the very end because when you're putting your OSB or wall sheathing up on the outside, you want it to break on the 16 inches. Okay, so here's the actual end of my wall. Well, if I go 16 inches, that's here. Well, when I put my OSB on this wall, I'm gonna start it on the corner and it's not gonna break there. It's gonna break here. So that's why I leave my tape measure hooked on because really what I'm doing is subtracting that three and a half inches and then uh, 15 and a quarter, 31 and a quarter, you know, going all the way down through setting up your, where your stud spacing is. So I just wanted to cover that because, you know, if I look at this in, in, in real world talk here, if I have a, if I have a two by four wall that's going this way, butting up to this two by four, even though I know this is a two by six, but <laughs> um, if I have a two by four wall butting up to here, cause this is my sandwich wall, I still have to pull from the outside because like I said, I got to put OSB on the outside of the wall. So that's why I do the, put the actual three and a half there. Uh, again, in case you missed it at the beginning, I'm using a two by six because that's what I had quick and pull, and that's what I pulled off the rack. Um, but a two by four is, is better. I use a two by sixes for uh, rafters. But anyway, I hope that kind of painted a picture of what this is. And like I said, there should be several sheets available. Uh, if it's not below um, in this video description, then it'll be in the comments. So I'll, uh, I'll be able to attach it in there. So anyway, hope that helps. Enjoy.